Do you trust yourself? Seriously. Do you have enough confidence in your abilities to know that when you make a decision, it is 100% the right one for you? You should. You know yourself better than anyone else. I decided when I was seven years old that I was going to be an actor. Now, prior to that, I was going to be a paleontologist. I know, boys and dinosaurs. But at my seventh birthday, I got to see my first Broadway show. <laughs> I knew from that moment that that is exactly where I wanted to be and what I was going to be doing. Now, my parents, who were eminently more practical than I was, convinced me that, well, I needed to finish school first. <laughs> Apparently, living in New York, living in Columbus and trying to pursue a career in New York City when you're seven years old just isn't a really good combination. But I had to be on stage. My elementary school didn't have a theater club, so I started one. I wanted one. I did my research. I convinced my mother and a few other like-minded adults that it was feasible, and we dived ahead and did it. I started the Columbus Academy in sixth grade. Now, this was because an uh, elementary school teacher of mine had convinced my parents that if I stayed in public schools, I'd become a juvenile delinquent. <laughs> Apparently, getting all of your homework and all of your schoolwork done before the morning recess and spending the rest of the day getting into trouble can earn you a reputation. <sighs> At Academy, I started my second theater company. And this is one of the shows that we did. I decided in my junior year that I was going to attend Syracuse University. At that time, Syracuse had the best theater department in the United States. Unfortunately, this gave my college advisor some serious heart palpitations. They were only accepting 30 people into the program every year. And the school was expecting over 3,000 applicants. I'd done my research, though. I knew what they were expecting. I polished my two contrasting monologues until they shone. I trusted my instincts. I dived into that audition like I'd been doing it for years. Sixty days later, I had a letter asking me to join the freshman class at Syracuse University. That following September, when I began classes, I found out that I was one of only three students who'd been accepted on their first audition. The other 27 had to go through a, a first, second, or even third callback. I had trusted my instincts that much. Now, we're going to jump ahead a few years to my first national tour. Yeah, I look like that, yeah. Um, my first national tour, <laughs> it was a horrific experience, but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I was doing what I loved on stages all over the United States. Granted, the company I was working for didn't care if we got enough rest or if we had time to eat or if they paid us in a timely manner. But I was young, I ignored the hardships. But I learned two really important lessons during that tour. The first one should have been obvious. The arts are always a part of our lives, whether you realize it or not. It's subtle. And so arts education has to be there. Proficiency in mathematics leads to proficiency in music and vice versa. Dance classes can improve an athlete's performance out on the field. And acting classes should be mandatory for anyone who is considering a, a career as a minister or a politician or a teacher or in any job where you're going to talk to more than three people at any given time. The other thing that I learned was that the entertainment industry will absolutely chew you up and spit you out if you do not do the hard work. I realize that's true in other businesses, but people don't think about that in the arts. But it's true. Talent guarantees you nothing. There are a lot of really famous actors out there with no talent. But they're willing to do the work. The days are hard. They're long. If you're doing a Broadway show, you are rehearsing all day long. You are performing at night. If you're doing a movie, you may have a makeup call as early as 5 a.m. You may not be released from filming until midnight, and then you start all over on that same timetable the next day. Touring is not any easier. Tour buses are cramped and uncomfortable, and after two weeks, they smell. Okay? The job is a 14-hour-a-day minimum. You don't have guaranteed sick time. You don't have paid vacation. 
You don't have a retirement plan, and you are always having to audition for your next job. You only get paid if you work. And too many theater companies are willing to pay you next to nothing. Or nothing, because actors will work for the experience. Try paying your rent with experience. Now, twice my career was almost derailed. The first time happened 20 years ago. I broke two discs in my back. Now, the workers' comp doctor who looked at the x-rays the first time diagnosed a sprain. I thought he was wrong because I had sprained ankles. I'd sprained my wrist. It didn't feel like that. It felt like ground glass in some pepper grinder was in my back every time I breathed deeply, every time I bent, if I sat too long, if I stood too long. The doctor said it was a sprain. It didn't get any better. Two weeks went by before I finally convinced the doctor to look at the x-rays again. He found the fractures. They changed the diagnosis. I got the treatment I needed. That doctor told me that I was lucky that I was so pig-headed because if I hadn't convinced them to look at it again, I could have permanently da damaged my spinal cord. Now, five years ago, I woke up with no voice. Literally. I couldn't speak. I could growl out a few sounds, but they had no power, and it was very hard to understand it. Think Harvey Firestein only multiplied by a million times. All right? I went to the doctor, and she said I had laryngitis. Now, I had had laryngitis. I'm an actor. Laryngitis, your throat hurts. It's red. It's swollen. I had none of those symptoms. I just couldn't talk. But I wasn't the doctor, so I accepted that I had to come back in seven days. I did. She said I still had laryngitis. Now, at this point, I was starting to worry. I had already had to drop out of a production in Cincinnati. My contract with that theater company stated that if I missed more than two rehearsals, I could not do the show. I couldn't speak, so I could not rehearse. I was starting to panic. I thank God every day for my mom and for my boyfriend at the time, who was now my husband. They kept me sane during that time period. Went back to the doctor. She said it's laryngitis. I scribbled no. I demanded to see a specialist. Now remember, I'm a working actor. I had no insurance. I was paying for everything out of my savings account. This specialist that I went to ran test after test after test. Five weeks later, he sits me and Matt down in the office and he says, I don't know what's wrong. You might have cancer. You'll have to see an oncologist. But you'll never speak again. Your career's over. I was devastated. But Matt, bless his heart, made me go on Facebook and reach out to my network of, of other actors and, and, and singers and find out what was going on. That's how I met Dr. Eric Forrest at OSU. It was because of Dr. Eric Forrest that I found out that what I had was common. A virus had wrapped itself around the nerves to my vocal cords and paralyzed them. This happens to one in 100 people in their lifetimes. It could happen to you. It could happen to you. If it did, your doctor would most likely prescribe the regimen of $24.95 worth of antiviral medication and steroids. Two to three days later, you would have your voice back. In my case, because my doctors were looking for something exotic, it was six months from that morning when I woke up with no ability to speak until I was successfully able to audition for another show. Now, the lessons here are simple. Do your research. If you are armed with your facts, you can deal with any situation, in business, in personal relationships, in life. Do your research. Make the most of your opportunities. When my back hurt so badly that I didn't want to move, or when I could not speak, I couldn't work as an actor, but I could still write. Since then, I have written six plays. I might work on a novel. I'm about to start an autobiography. You can always find that opportunity. Align your vision with your dream. You do not have to be six foot nine to play pro basketball. You have to work a heck of a lot harder than everyone else, but you don't have to be six foot nine. So be realistic, but be imaginative, and be willing to do the hard work when the time comes. And finally, trust yourself. Every time I have second-guessed myself, I have been wrong. So trust your instincts. Trust yourself. Thank you.